Hey guys, Political Junkie 2414 here, and welcome back to my next 2024 presidential election related video. Um, so today we're going to be doing another 2020 or another uh, presidential matchup um, between incumbent Democratic President Joe Biden and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Um, so uh, you know. Uh, I'll just, you know, start off by, uh, hope, uh, you know, saying hi to you guys and, you know, hoping, you know, I hope that you all are having a great, re um, you've been having a great, uh, you know, you had a great week and, you know, you're having a good day, uh, day today and a good weekend overall. Uh, but, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, I've been really, I'm really happy to see the, uh, channel get a lot of support, uh, a lot more support recently. I think that we're really branching out and, you know, I'm going to try, you know, if you haven't noticed, I've put a new, uh, banner up on my, um, my uh, channel, uh, my channel, my, uh, homepage on my channel, and I hope to put, um, you know, a, uh, a, a channel symbol up, uh, on my, ch uh, put a channel symbol up on YouTube as well, so, uh, yeah, just, uh, wanted to say a couple of those things, uh, very happy for all of your support, and all of your, uh, you know, all, all, all of you who have responded to all of the polls that I've been sending out on my community tab, you guys have been great at answering those and leaving, you know, uh, you, you know, your comments, which is really important, you know, in this, uh, this, uh, line, of um you know a discussion i guess this uh, these these uh this kind of topic or these kinds of topics um so uh first of all um you know basically the reason why i'm talking about nikki haley uh, you know first of all i should probably introduce her to a lot of people in case you don't know uh she was first elected as south carolina governor in 2010 by only five points but there was a decent democratic candidate here although it's a little surprising that this race was so close um considering the national red wave i mean you can see republicans had 29 governorships and uh haley only won by five points which was less than john mccain won the state by in 2008 but in 2014 she redeemed herself and won by 15 points um you know against the same democratic opponent then uh you know around 2017 she got um uh donald trump uh, chose her as his uh um you know as uh, his administration's uh ad ambassador to uh the uh, united nations or you know the the uh his administration's uh you know uh you know person to serve as the uh, u.s ambassador ambassador to the u.n uh so yeah that's where haley ended up uh you know that's where Haley ended up. Um, so she did not complete the uh, her full term, and you know Henry McMaster, her uh, lieutenant governor, then became uh, then then took her spot. Um, but you know since then, I think uh, you know Haley resigned at the end of 2018 from the ambassador's office, and she's been floated as a presidential candidate pretty much since the start of you know the uh, 2024 presidential cycle. I I mean you know it, it's really you know we're really starting to get into it now, but. Um, you know, ever since the talk began after the 2020 election, who will run, uh, you know, Nikki Haley was the name up there, but the catch was that she said that if Donald Trump runs for the presidency, runs for the Republican nomination, she will not challenge him. She was one of the few people that actually left on good terms with the president or with the former president. Um, you know, but it does seem like she's going to walk that back because it looks like that she's going to announce on Wednesday, uh, February, this Wednesday, February 15th, that she, uh, is running for president of the United States. So, uh, you know, what, you know, first of all, right before we get into this prediction, I don't want to waste too much time, uh, but, uh, yeah, because we're already three minutes in, but I think Haley has a lot of potential to do well with suburban voters, but would really not, would really struggle with rural turnout and with working class voters in the Rust Belt. I think that those are her weak, are her weak spots. I think that she would do well in, you know, the Sun Belt, which we will get into, but, you know, I think that you know, she she is, you know, a mixed bag of a candidate. I think she could defeat Joe Biden, considering his uh, approval ratings. But again, approval ratings are on everything. We saw how that, um, how we, we saw that uh, the midterms demonstrated that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that that is really all I have to say. Oh, and I think that Haley, you know, has a very small chance of winning the primary if somehow DeSantis drops out, uh, you know, or not even if DeSantis drops out, if Trump drops out, I think that, you know, Haley has a chance to beat DeSantis in a primary, but even then, I think that she does not have, you know, a lot of, you know, I don't think that she would be too great for, uh, you know, I, I think that the primary voters, you know, the, the people who vote in primaries are typically more extreme nowadays, and I don't think that she would, you know, have enough appeal to win a primary. But let's say that she did, uh, and let's start by filling out the safe states for Biden, um, and Haley, uh, the reason why the screen just shifted is because uh, I'm using a, uh, you know, a separate mouse from uh, the usual one that's on my computer because my computer's acting up for some reason. But anyways, we're just going to fill out the safe states for uh, 
um, you know, Biden and Haley. Uh, these will be the states that are go to either party by over 15%. We don't really need to talk about them. Um, so when we're all said and done with that, we have uh, Joe Biden at 191 electoral votes. Nikki Haley is at 113. I don't think South Carolina would be safe. We'll get to that in a second. I'll just point out Colorado right now. Um, you know, I think Haley would do well in the Denver suburbs. I think that she would do better than Trump and DeSantis. But I think the issue for her is that, you know, like Joe O'Day, um, you know, the rural turnout would be really bad for her. And I think that considering that O'Day also did worse in, than Trump in some of the uh, suburbs, uh, Denver suburbs, I think that that, you know, was not, uh, you know, showing that he was a bad candidate for those areas. I think it was more so the fact that Jared Polis really helped out Democrats uh, last year in Colorado, and also the fact that it's just that Denver is, you know, Denver and it's in, you know, is the surrounding areas are just trending so far to the left. And Colorado, you know, is clearly not a competitive state anymore. It could be over 15, but I don't really, or under 15, but I don't really see a reason to put it as such. Uh, so now we're going to uh, go into the, uh, the you know the likely states which will go to either party by um, be um, between five and 15 percent. These are the uh, ones, uh, you know, these are the states that, you know, are not necessarily super competitive, but in a best case scenario for each party, or not a best case scenario, but you know they they're not one hundred percent gone for the uh, for either party, um, but they are still pretty likely to go uh, a certain way. Um, so, you know, it's a big gap between five and fifteen points. Some of them will be really close to solid, others really close to lean. But we're just going to start out with uh, Biden's likely states. I think New Mexico could be interesting uh, if Haley does really well with Hispanic voters, which I think. Uh, she has a lot of potential with, um, you know, uh, Hispanics and other minorities, but I still do think that, you know, New Mexico has shown us that it is stubbornly blue. Even Michelle Lujan Grisham uh, won her Senate, or her governor's race by six points, despite being very, very unpopular and facing a pretty good Republican opponent. Um, so I think New Mexico turnout there could be interesting uh, long term, but I, I you know, or it, it could be interesting long term, and I think the turnout could, you know, hurt Biden here. Um, you know, I think that Haley would do better in, you know, some of the Albuquerque and Santa Fe suburbs, but I think beyond that, she kind of tanks with rural voters, and I think she, you know, might might do a little bit better with Hispanics, but overall, uh, I don't really, you know, I don't think New Mexico is that, uh, that will, would be that interesting. Uh, Minnesota, this would be a likely D state. I think this would be around the same margin that Joe Biden won it, uh, that Biden won it by against Trump in 2020. It was about seven points. You know, it, it, Minnesota is very unique for the Rust Belt and, you know, for, you know, its neighbors in the Rust Belt, considering that a lot of working class voters are still vote, you know, uh, Democrats are still doing like phenomenally well with, uh, you know, working class voters and rural white voters, you know, you know, they're, they're, you know, Wisconsin and Michigan, you know, are pretty, you know, decent for them, but not like Minnesota. Minnesota is, you know, an extremely, you know, white state as of right now. It's getting more diverse, uh, you know, as the uh, Minneapolis suburbs uh, grow and become more diverse and, you know, uh, you know, become less white, which is what's helping Democrats, you know, fend off some of the losses, you know, in the working class areas. But overall, Minnesota should really be a state that's, you know, re Republican leaning. And yet, even when, you know, Trump did really well in the Rust Belt in 2016, you know, yeah, he almost won Minnesota, but th I think that that was partially due to the fact that there was a lot of vote splitting. So Clinton only got 46%. And also the, you know, he, you know, when you see, all these shifts, you know, from 2012, you see Wisconsin shift by seven points, uh, you know, Michigan shift by 10, Indiana shift by, you know, almost 10, uh, Iowa shifted by like 15, and Minnesota only shifted, it only shifted by six. So I think that that shows the Democrats have a really strong coalition in Minnesota. You know, the state party is really, really good. Uh, you know, the, the Dems are, you know, the state uh, Democratic Party is really good uh, in Minnesota. And I think that that's going, you know, that, that will propel Biden to a similar margin than, that he, uh, had, uh, last time, you know, in 2020. In Maine, I think that this, you know, I think that, you know, Haley would do all right in the, uh, Portland suburbs. I think that, you know, she, she would, you know, ha have a bit of trouble with a rural, um, you know, turnout. And I think that that would affect the second district, which we'll talk about, uh, sooner rather than later. But, uh, I think that overall Biden, you know, I think Maine, you know, like Minnesota should be a deep red state, but it, you know, or it should be at least a Republican leaning state, but it's not because, you know, Democrats still have, you know, still doing like relatively decent, you know, uh, re you know, decent with rural white voters, uh, you know, relative to other states like Ohio and Iowa, where they've just completely tanked with them. So I think Biden wins, you know, Maine by like, you know, 10. I, I don't think, you know, it, it shifts much, but, you know, I think it's about the same that it was in 2020. Um, and finally, Virginia, I think, you know, 
Haley would do well in Nova. Um, but I think that a lot of people have to understand the governor's races. You know, like, I don't think that Youngkin's win in Virginia really said, you know, too much about um, the state, you know, it trending right. Like, yes, it was an impressive performance, but I think that there were a lot of c factors contributing to that. You know, Democratic turnout was very low. McAuliffe was an awful candidate for, you know, just, he really shot himself in the foot with, uh, you know, his, uh, you know, op opinion on, you know, t uh, you know, parent, parent, uh, parental roles, I guess, in schooling, uh, you know, and what their, you know, their parental, uh, you know, decisions in terms of what their kids, uh, learn. Um, you know, I think Youngkin was just, he benefited from it, you know, not being a midterm or, you know, a presidential year. It was an off year. Uh, and I think overall, the you know, the environment was really bad for Democrats. Yeah, uh, and I think that, you know, if you look at, uh, like, uh, you know, presidential level, the presidential level in 2008, Obama won Virginia by six points, you know, um, and if you look at the governor's race uh, in the, uh, you know, the in, you know, 2009, one year later, uh, what was the name? Bob McDonnell won this, uh, you know, won this race by 17 points. I mean, this was an absolute blowout. This was a flip. Uh, Tim Kaine was the incumbent governor, uh, but he couldn't run for re-election because Virginia has one term or uh, only allows governors to serve one consecutive term. Uh, if you look at uh, 2021, though, um, you know, it was, a, it was a smaller shift. It wasn't like, you know, over 25 point. It wasn't like a 25 point shift to the right. It was only about 12 points. And the fact that, you know, Youngkin, you know, I think when you compare those numbers, I think it shows that no matter what the, you know, the suburbs are getting really hard for Republicans to win in Virginia, I think that they've gotten decent. I think Youngkin has shown that, you know, the Virginia GOP, you know, has life. It is not, you know, completely dead on, you know, it is not completely dead. You know, I think that, you know, especially in Loudoun and, uh, you know, Loudoun has been decent for Republicans. I think that Haley would really do well there. You know, and she, she would improve in all these areas, but I don't think, you know, the, the thing with the suburban trends towards Republicans is that they're not going to go back to their Bush levels. They're not even going to go back to their Mitt Romney levels, you know, of, of uh, support. So, yeah, so I think Virginia votes for Biden by like six or seven points, maybe eight. Uh, but uh, yeah, now we'll get into Haley's likely states. Uh, let me just check the time. Uh, we're at 12 minutes. That's not too bad. Just trying to keep it on the shorter side because I know that my presidential election predictions and just my videos in general have been pretty long. Uh, we'll go into Alaska first. You know, it's left trending. I think that Haley would, you know, do well because she's a more traditional Republican, so she'd probably win it by, like, 10 or 11, uh, you know, maybe 12. Um, but I think that, you know, it, it, it's left trending, and I think that it could be, you know, it'll be competitive in, like, 10 years, I think. Um, I think that Mary Peltola has shown us the Democrats, you know, have a path to winning it in Alaska. It just takes you know, a bad GOP opponent and a really good Democratic candidate. Not that Biden's a bad candidate for Alaska. I think he's a decent, but he is nowhere like Peltola. He is not someone who's going to win Alaska in 2024 unless something crazy happens. Uh, in South Carolina, I think that considering black turnout will probably be up since it's a presidential year, you will see, you know, Biden improve, not improve off of 2020, uh, but he would keep it under 15. I think he'd win it by, you know, he'll lose it by 13 or 14. Uh, you know, Haley's decent, but, you know, I think also Biden, uh, Dem Democrats moving uh, their uh, their first caucus, um, you know, their first primary caucus or, um, to South Carolina. They changed it from Iowa. I think that that really helps them in this state with black turnout. Um, but, you know, overall, it's a red state. South Carolina is not going blue. And Haley is a decent candidate for the area. Uh, Texas, I think, you know, Haley would do all right with Hispanic voters and she would, you know, do would do all right you know she she would be she would do fine in the dallas fort worth area you know and i think she would you know she'd do well in the suburbs of austin and houston as well but and maybe san antonio san antonio but i don't think that she would you know win it by like 11 points like mccain i think that she would you know win it by like five or six I, you know texas is left trending uh the suburbs you know even if they do shift right a little bit will only be by a little uh, will only be by so much you know we saw greg abbott you know in 2022 do worse than he did in 2018 in many of those texas suburbs i think beto o'rourke even flipped uh one of the counties uh near austin i forget what it's called um but uh yeah it, it's a county in the uh you know that's like north of austin um you know that uh voted for abbott in 2018 but voted for o'rourke in 2022 and uh yeah I think that Texas, in general, you know, not ready for Democrat, you know, it's not Democrats, you know, it's not their time to win Texas yet, but it's coming. And I think, you know, Haley would, you know, have an all right performance in Texas. So, yeah. Uh, and Iowa and Ohio uh, and Florida as well would be our last likely states. 
Iowa and Ohio, I think that, you know, Haley would not do well with the rural base. She would do all right in the suburbs, but I think that she would win it. You know, she'd win Ohio by, like, you know, probably eight or nine, and Iowa by, like, not, you know, around the same. I don't think that there would be a lot of reversion. These states are super right trending, so I think even a candidate like Haley, who would not do super well, you know, would not do, would not be great for the rural areas. I think that would, you know, that decreases, you know, the margins. But I overall think that she would hold on to the states. You know, they, they are stubbornly red. And I think that, you know, they will continue trending right, uh, you know, even if it's only by so much. Uh, in Florida, I think Haley would, you know, do all right. You know, she she would be, you know, she would perform, um, you know, semi-okay. I think that she would, you know, she might not win a Miami-Dade. I, I She probably would. But um, I think that she would do all right in the suburbs and do okay in Miami-Dade. But I don't think that Florida's, you know, going to be, you know, I, I, no matter what happens, you know, unless something, you know, uh, barring, you know, some, you know, monumental shifts in Florida, I don't think that it's going to be the same margin for Republicans on the presidential level as it was uh, on the Senate and governor's level this year. I think that that was, you know, mainly because DeSantis and Rubio were uniquely good candidates for Florida, um, you know, and while the state's shifting right, Democratic turnout was just absolutely abysmal this, uh, you know, last year. So I think that, you know, in Florida, so I think uh, you'll see an imp you'll see an improvement relative to 2022, but still Biden will lose Florida by, you know, uh, a larger, you know, a, you know, a, a historically large margin for the state, for a state that, you know, decided who was president just 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, now we're going down. So uh, now we have uh, Joe Biden at 221 vote, electoral votes. Nikki Haley's at 218. We're going to go into the uh, these uh, remaining one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, you know, around eight or you know eight, eight uh, states and two congressional districts, which will be under five points. We'll start off with the lean states, which will be decided by one to five points. Uh, not you know the, the you know then. I, I'm just going to get into it. Uh, so for uh, Haley, I guess we'll talk about her uh, lean state, or state, I guess you could say. Uh, so it is North Carolina. I think she would do pretty well in the Charlotte and Raleigh and uh, Raleigh areas. You know, I think that she would, you know, cut into uh, Biden's margins in the suburbs. Um, you know, and I think that rural black, you know, the fact that the rural, you know, the northeastern rural uh, part of the state that was historically black, but is but is uh, becoming less black as more um, African Americans move into the urban areas. I think that that will you know pr that will inhibit Biden. Not not you know it, it will inhibit Biden um, from winning North Carolina. I think that you know there will you know you'll see uh, you know states continue to trend. I think that uh, you know you you will see the state uh, you know these areas you know these rural black areas continue to shift right. Um, you know, and I think, you know, you'll see Biden do decently in the suburbs, but I think Haley offsets that. You know, North Carolina is just a really hard state for Democrats to win. They can do it. It is, you know, the North Carolina Democrats are, you know, pretty okay. But, uh, you know, I think that, you know, they, they do best on the local level. And I think that's for a couple of reasons. You know, I think it's because they have, you know, just more appeal. More people are, you know, willing to cross the party line when it's not, you know, talking about national politics. And, you know, that's why Democrats... That's why I think Democrats have done so well in, you know, North Carolina governorships and why they'll probably win it in 2024, even if the state votes red uh, for the presidential level. Now uh, we'll go to the lean red, uh, sec uh, mean second district. Uh, you know, th this one's right trending. I don't think Haley would underperform Trump by a lot here. I think she win it by like, you know, just under five. You know, I think that this this district is very right trending. It, it, it's in a down ballot. It's more democratic. Uh, just look at how Jared Golden is able to win. You know, but in, in all fairness, he is you know a uniquely good uh, Democrat for this seat. He is very conservative, very you know pro gun, pro uh, you know pro, uh, you know he he's supportive of a lot. He's you know supports I guess a lot of conservative or he you know he has a lot of conservative talking points. But you know he's he's definitely. Uh, you know, not, you know, he, he's one of the most moderate Democrats in the House, but he's definitely no, uh, you know, he, he's not like, you know, uh, he, he doesn't, you know, stray away from the party line, uh, you know, I, I, you know, all the time. But uh, yes, yeah, so I think Haley would, you know, underperform with underperform with uh, rural voters here, but overall, not not too bad of a performance. I think that it still votes for her. I'd be surprised if Biden carried it. Uh, we'll go to New Hampshire. I think that Haley, once again, would do well with these white college-educated voters. New Hampshire is kind of, you know, they're, you know, the urban and suburban and rural areas are all just, you know, kind of melded into one. You know, New Hampshire's, uh, you know, odd that way in that it's basically a big suburb. And, you know, I think it's proven that federally it's pretty blue, um, you know, but I think, 
like Arizona and Georgia, it is open to voting for Republicans, just not Trump Republicans. And I think Haley, she's not a super Trumpy Republican, but you know, it's hard enough for Republicans to win federally in New Hampshire. So I think Biden wins it by like four or five. Uh, then we go to the second district of Nebraska. It's pretty left trending, but it is swingy. You know, it voted for Trump by two points in 2016. Then it went shifted all the way to Biden in uh, 2020. So I think, uh, you know, Haley would do all right here. She'd probably lose it by like five. And, you know, I think that, you know, should she be on the ballot, I think that would help Don Bacon in the House race. I don't know if that would be enough for him to win, considering polarization. But I think that that, you know, DeSantis or Haley being the Republican nominee for president would definitely uh, help, you know, Don Bacon, you know, potentially win re-election. Uh, you know, he could win it if it was Trump anyway, because he is a really good incumbent, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, then we have, uh, two states in the Rust Belt that are lean for Biden. Uh, they're the states of Michigan and Pennsylvania. I think Michigan has just proven that it's really hard for Republicans to win. You know, Trump won it by, like, 0.2% in, uh, 26, 20, not 2020, 2016. Um, you know, and I think that, you know, long-term, you know, the Rust Belt's trending right. I think that, you know, she'd do a little bit worse here. I think she'd lose it by, like, uh, three and a half, four. Uh, you know, she'd do all right in, you know, some of the uh, Detroit suburbs, and, you know, she might do better than, you know, Trump or DeSantis would in uh, Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo, but I think that, you know, the ru the rural areas and the working class areas, you know, like Flint, Saginaw, uh, I, I can't think of any others, um, you know, all of those areas shift big time. Oh, in Macomb, uh, they all shift uh, pretty, you know, big, you know, they all shift towards Biden, uh, you know, and I think that that, you know, lands you at like a three or four point victory for him in the state. Uh, Pennsylvania, you know, the suburbs are, you know, give Haley a path, but considering how stubbornly, le um, you know, how stubbornly left trending they are, you know, the fact that Dr. Oz, you know, did a lot worse than, you know, did worse than Trump and, you know, most of those, you know, counties, uh, you know, I think that, you know, even though, you know, overall he had a lot of, uh, you know, there, there was an, I guess, an expectation, uh, that, you know, he would do a lot better in those areas or, you know, at least somewhat better. Um, you know, and he, he did a lot worse than Trump in some of those or not a lot worse, but you get my point. Either way, I think that, you know, Pennsylvania is hard for Republicans to win if they, you know, don't get good, you know, first of all, if they don't get good turnout in the rural areas, and if they, you know, keep, you know, and if Philly, Philly's turnout is really good for Democrats, and, you know, they do fine, you know, and if uh, the suburbs stay fairly blue. So I think, you know, Biden, you know, wins Pennsylvania by two, maybe two and a half. Um, I think that, you know, Allegheny, you know, home to Pittsburgh uh, continues trending left. I think that most of Western Pennsylvania shifts towards Biden. You know, maybe Chester County votes like a little, you know, I think Chester would, you know, be like a 14 point win for Biden. That would really be uh, you know, I think that, you know, in Lancaster, uh, and maybe Burks would be, you know, the places where Haley would, you know, shine in Pennsylvania. But besides that, I think, uh, you know, she, she'd have a lot of trouble winning it. Um, so now we're down to the four toss-up states, Nevada, Arizona, and, uh, uh, Georgia, and Wisconsin. Uh, and, uh, we'll go through all of them. Uh, you know, these will be decided, you know, these are the tilde states that'll be decided by, uh, less than one percentage point. Uh, we'll get out, uh, a couple out of the way. I think we'll start off with Georgia. Um, you know, I think that long term, the you know, obviously the Atlanta suburbs are going to become, uh, you know, our long term, you know, in a long term, you know, speaking long term, uh, they are gone for Republicans. Uh, they are trending left so, you know, so, so quickly. But on the more local level, Georgia is pretty Republican. You know, the GOP had a good night in Georgia uh, in uh, November of last month of last year. It was really just the Senate race where they just completely dropped the ball. And what was unique about the Senate race? Well, there was a Trump endorsed candidate, Herschel Walker, who could not even put together a sentence and a very good Democratic candidate. Uh, so overall, I think that that, uh, you know, shows that Georgia is traditionally a Republican state, likes traditional conservatives like Nikki Haley, but do not like, uh, you know, state, you know, do not like the Trump Republicans. And I think, you know, you'll see uh, the Atlanta suburbs shift a little bit to the to the right. You know, they won't they won't nearly be as good as they were for Kemper Raffensperger. Not not by you know you know not by you know not even close. But uh, I think that you know Democrats keep good turnout in Georgia. But overall, I think that you know just to cut you know a little bit of shifting uh, the Atlanta suburbs and you know maybe uh, like uh, you know maybe uh, what, what's it um. I, I forget the name of the county, but uh, near Savannah, um, you know, I think that that's, you know, enough, or Chatham, that's the name of the county. I think if you shift those areas a little bit to the right, 
I think that you get you uh, get in a very narrow Haley victory, but fairly you know absolutely possible for uh, you know Biden to win a Georgia. Uh, Arizona, I will also give to Haley. Uh, you know, now we are, you know, now she has the lead for the first time. Um, at least that uh, I remember as as I'm making this video, I've mainly just been talking. Uh, but I think, you know, in a similar case to Georgia, Arizona likes traditional Republicans. It's, you know, left trending long term. And, you know, I think Haley would struggle with rural turnout, which could really hurt her here. Um, but I think that she would do, you know, fairly well in Maricopa. I think that she would, you know, come really close, if not win, uh, you know, she would either win or, you know, come pretty close to winning Maricopa County. She'd do better in tu the Tucson suburbs and Pima, uh, you know, and I think that she would do all, all right with Hispanic voters. I think that she would do enough to win the state of Arizona very narrowly. Um, but as you can see, now we have Nevada and Wisconsin. And overall, where do I stand on these two states? Well, I'm going to give them the, to Biden, and he wins the election uh, very narrowly. 276 electoral votes to Haley's 262. I'll explain briefly these two states in Nevada. Um, I know a lot of people think that um, Nevada is, you know, or well, I, I know that the opinion is that Nevada is, you know, completely, you know, in the future is going to be really good for Republicans. I think in the future, you know, I think that long term Republic, you know, I think the GOP is going to do all right in Nevada. I think that the trends in Clark County, or, you know, or the, uh, you know, if the uh, trends in Clark County or the shifts, the rightward shifts in uh, Las Vegas are going to, you know, are, you know, not just because of turnout problems for Democrats. Uh, I think that, you know, that that's a really good indicator of a, of a, re a bright Republican future in Nevada. I think, you know, Washoe is going to trend away from them. But, you know, I think uh, Clark, you know, is, uh, you know, uh, seems to be shifting right. But the thing, for, you know, with Nevada is that it has a very good Democratic machine. You know, obviously the Reed machine, uh, Harry Reed's, you know, legacy helped uh, Democrats, you know, H Harry Reed's political machine, you know, helped Democrats win in Nevada even after his death last year. Um, you know, I guess, you know, technically a year and a half. Well, no, it was a year ago because it was at the end of 2021, but it's 2023 now. Uh, so, yeah, I think that, you know, also considering how bad the turnout was for Democrats, if you look at the exit polls, um, you know, the electorate that showed up in Nevada, um, you know, was a Trump plus five ele electorate, and they still lost the Senate race and barely won the governor's race. And so I think when you see that, you can show that, you know, when, when you consider that Democratic turnout is, you know, almost certainly going to be higher in a presidential year, and, you know, the fact that, you know, this, you know, the rural areas are going to swing uh, towards Biden most likely because Haley's not a great, not a great candidate for those areas. I think that that's enough to give Biden the state of Nevada narrowly, even if, you know, uh, some, you know, even if Clark shifts like a point to the right. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's where I stand on Nevada. And finally, Wisconsin, I think this is the hardest state for me to, you know, make a decision on because on one hand, uh, you know, you you can make the case for Biden in saying that well the rural areas you know the driftless area and all the you know working class areas are going to you know swing big time towards or you know are going to swing uh, you know against Haley they're not going to be great for her and I agree and I agree with that but on the other hand you can say the suburbs of Green Bay and Milwaukee are you know the the Wow counties and you know the Green Bay area um, are going to shift towards Haley and so I think overall and you know you, you could potentially make a case for you know her doing better in uh, you know the Madison suburbs as well. Um, so I think overall you can make a lot of cases here, but I think uh, Milwaukee and, uh, you know, Madison turnout being, high, you know, considering that Madison Milwaukee turnout will probably be pretty high, I think that, you know, that will be enough to propel Biden to a narrow victory in the state, uh, even if he does, you know, get get some regression in the, uh, you know, in the wild counties and in the Green Bay, Green Bay area. And I think that, you know, Haley would all, will also be hurt by the working class areas shifting against her. So Wisconsin, I think would I would give to Biden by like, 0.1%, 0.2%. I, I don't know if it's that close. It, it, it's close, but I don't know if it's that close. But either way, uh, pure toss-up, but I'll give it to Biden. Um, so yeah, uh, as I said, uh, this is the final map. This is 276 electoral votes for Joe Biden. He wins re-election. Nikki Haley gets 262. So it's a you know very close election, but in the end, Democrats maintain control of the presidency and the vice presidency, and that could help them in the Senate if they only lose one seat. Um, so yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, yeah, um, this this video is going to be a little bit shorter than I usually have it on. I think that this one went by a little bit shorter uh, than my other ones. But uh, yeah, uh, you know if you uh, ha if you know someone who would enjoy this kind of content, share the video with them. Uh, you know. Uh, turn on notifications so you don't miss another one of my videos. Uh, check out my non-political channel, Interactor127, and my comrades channel, uh, Growling Zeus 666 
And uh, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And uh, I'll see you. Guys, I'll see y'all next time when I talk about all things politics. See ya.